your word speak to us in the name of jesus make my tongue like a pen of a ready writer in the name of jesus speak life unto us speak through me in the name of jesus speak to me in the name of jesus father we thank you in jesus name we have prayed in jesus name we have prayed praise the lord praise the lord praise the living jesus ladies and gentlemen as we round up the month of january it's interesting that january is over isn't that interesting already we are 30 days into the new year i'm sure you all remember how you set up a new year and before you know it 2022 will be over we'll be in 2023 i pray if god can keep us till the second to the last day of january he will keep us the rest of this year in the name of jesus not just this year alone but for the rest of our life if it tarries in the name of jesus he will keep us he will protect us he will guide us in the name of jesus i started it seems a long time i have preached now we started speaking the first son at the, the first time we three sundays ago we were talking about the the theme for the month is divine presence divine presence and then um, i'm going to quickly ru run through what i said earlier okay divine presence and we're looking at 15 benefits of god's divine presence 15 benefits and we said whenever you, you hear the word divine being used is relating to god is god like okay god like and the hebrew word that that translate divine is the word that the, sorry, the Hebrew word that translates yeah presence is Shekinah. Okay, so the word Shekinah means the presence of God or God's presence. And we said without Him in our lives, nothing is worthwhile. God's presence in any particular situation almost always would lead to a miracle. We need God's divine presence to enjoy 2022. Moses says, I will not go if your presence does not go with me. Because the presence of God has so many benefits. In fact, when I was writing this message, I realized that the presence of God is like a one-stop shop. You now you go to some stores, everything you want is there. If you go to some store, if you go to some store, everything you want, you don't need to go to three, four, five stores, you go there, everything you want is in one, one store okay that's what because the presence of god has so many benefits and we started speaking three weeks ago we said one of the benefits is joy protection you are protected you have boldness you have confidence and then the presence of god also gives us guidance i don't know anyone who doesn't want guidance in 2022 there are so many things you want to do there are so many things i want to do you need somebody to guide you so today we'll continue talking about benefit because this benefit will make us to take god's divine presence serious in 2022 not just for this year for, but for the rest of our life you know you know the scripture says in psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd I, I shall not want he make me lie down in grace pastures he lead me beside the still water when god's presence is leading you you cannot go wrong ladies and gentlemen when god's presence is leading you you cannot to go wrong is almost impossible the only reason why you will go wrong is if you disobey if you don't you know when i put on my sat nav and i'm following turn right turn left at the roundabout take the third exit i'm following it how can i go wrong but you know sometimes my sat nav has led me to the wrong place before so once in a while they will just lead you wrong so blind following the blind but god can never go wrong that's that that is why oftentimes we men of god we try to use things to explain god but there are flaws dr bishop Tosin will tell you dr Tosin will tell you many times you use a start now and it takes us to nowhere you'll be thinking you say you have arrived at your destination what middle of nowhere you'll be thinking wow but nine out of ten it always takes you to the right place but there is that one time where you can't find the location you'll be thinking all right what do i do now 
You now remember, maybe I should use Google Maps. Maybe I should not look at my pap, my maps. Some people carry maps in their car, even though they have a sat nav. So there are flaws, but the presence of God, when He's guiding you, you cannot go wrong. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with the benefits. The sixth benefit of God's presence is peace. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have God's presence, you have peace. You see, when we talk about peace, peace is freedom from disturbance, tranquility. You see, this peace that we are talking about is not that there will be no issues. In spite of the turbulence, in spite of the challenges you are facing, you are calm. You see, I, Holy Spirit said to me, the presence of God does not stop the storm, but it calms you in the storm. Just because you have God's presence, there will be storm around you. Everybody are concerned. Oh, they are worried. But you, you are calm. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the scripture for the month, of course, is Exodus 33 and verse 14. Okay? That's, that's, that's the scripture for the month. And that scripture says, it says, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. So when you have rest, you have peace. When you have peace, you have rest. You see, when scripture says, I will give you rest, it doesn't mean that you'll be sleeping 24 hours a day. It means that even if you have 2 hours of sleep, that too will look as if you are asleep for 10. Does that make sense? That rest is not that, oh, God say I will have rest, so I, and I'll be sleeping for 7, 10, 10 hours. So, no, no. It means that the little time of rest you have, you have quality rest. Whether it is for an hour, or, you know, sometimes you have a power nap. It's, you, by the time you wake up, you will feel so strong than that 6 hours of sleep you had over the night. So, peace. Okay? Scripture says in John 16 and verse 33, I have said these things to you that in me you you may have peace but in the world you will have tri so tribulations will be in this world as long as we are here there will be tribulations but in spite of the challenges if you are calm when people are worried you are calm because you know that you carry somebody's presence there is someone with you you are not alone colossians 3 and verse 15 says and let the peace of Christ rule your heart. How can the peace of Christ rule your heart if this presence is not with you? We've learned so much about what God's presence is and what God's presence is not. But it is important because oftentimes when you know the benefit of something, then you'll be intentional about pursuing that thing. M many of us are learning to drive. Because you know the benefit of driving. When I was much younger, not that I'm old now, when I was much younger, I, I, did, I wasn't bothered about learning to drive. My siblings were learning as I'm not interested. Because I didn't see the benefit, I didn't see the need. Not until I started driving, oh, I saw the benefits. I saw the benefit. I don't, nobody don't decide what time I leave my house. If I have to go and catch the bus, I have to leave at the time of the bus. But because I'm driving, I can leave anytime. Number seven, the presence of God gives power. Very quickly, Psalm 97 and verse 5. You see, when we are in God's presence, the fire and the power of his presence, Scripture says it will melt away every mountain, every obstacles and hindrances before us, and every satanic plan over our lives. I don't think there is anyone who has any power. Act 1 and verse 8 says you will receive power after the Holy Ghost. After the Holy Ghost. So the presence of God gives you power. It empowers you. Power is the ability or the capacity to do something or to act in a particular way. You are able to do You know, sometimes I'm sure some of us can relate with this. You know, when you are trying to date a lady, you know, you try to show off when they are around. You, you know, their presence just gives you some sort of power. 
you do you, you do things things you don't normally do you will do it same as god just like god is better that the ability and the capacity will come upon you psalm 97 and verse 5 very quickly i want to read that you see god's presence upon us gives us the ability to do the impossible holy spirit said god's presence upon you and i gives you and i the ability to do the impossible and to be the impossible the mountains melt like wax before the lord before the lord of the earth everything melt like wax so you are you are you are empowered because you carry a power you know it was the presence of god upon david that empowered david to kill goliath did you know that because david was conscious that i carry something my god there is something i carry i carry a power that is something i carry that empowers me i pray may we enjoy this benefit not just in 2022 but for the rest of our lives in the name of jesus isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29 it says he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might he increases strength the presence of god does not only empower you but it strengthens you there are many times where i mean bishop isaac could bear no witness i'm always on the road some days i don't even know how i managed to get home but i shall go to and i'm like wow it can only be god because i have no clue I, I, ju I just I have no clue how I got to. It, it strength comes. You just you just you just you just you strength. You don't even know where the strength comes from. But if you are spiritual enough, you know this can only be God, because you cannot explain it, you cannot comprehend it, you can't even understand it yourself. I don't think there's anyone here who does not need power. We need power to overcome the 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 the, the works of the devil. Scripture says the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I pray God will help you and I in the name of Jesus. Number eight, provision. The presence of God provides for you. The presence of God, ladies and gentlemen, provides for you. You see, provision is the action of providing or supplying something for use. The presence of God brings supplies. It brings supplies. You just get supplies from everywhere, anywhere. Everywhere you go, you get supply. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things, at all times you may abound in every good work. God is able to make. It is the presence of God in you that enables you to be able to God's presence brings supply God's presence brings supply to us why because you carry something you carry so you see one of the beautiful things about God's presence is people would, would do what they do they would, do, they would do what they are doing without realizing they are doing it some will say, oh, if Pilar comes today, man, I'm just going to say no to him. By the time they see me, no turns to yes. They want to say no, but yes is coming. And uh, they will have done, I will have been long gone. Like, Why did I even do what I did? It's God's presence. It's the presence. There is something in me. I carry something. Philippians 4 and verse 19 says, my God will supply all your need at according the presence of god upon you will bring supply to you do you wonder how the birds how they eat all these animals they don't cook have you ever seen any animal cook and they're having three course meals? they don't cook but somehow they feed they eat somehow because there is supply there is supply for them they see opportunity in every situation 
to God is a God of provision. God is the great provider. That song says, He's a great provider. He's a great provider. He's a great provider. He's a great provider. Yes, my brother, in 2022, He will surely provide for you and provide for me. He will surely provide for us. That is my prayer for you and I. In 2022, you will not lack anything good in the name of Jesus. You don't hear me. I said in 2022, you will not lack anything good in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, once you key into God's presence, that's all that you need. The presence of God, just just presence of God alone chases demons away. They, 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 they just can't come near you. They just can't. It provides protection. It provides healing. It provides breakthrough. It provides promotion. It provides so many. It's a provider. When you have a provider, you know, on that particular thing, you don't need to worry. When somebody says, for the rest of 2022 or the rest of your life, I'm going to provide this for you. You know, in that area, you don't need to worry because there's a provider. There is a provider. Maru Satelege de Bushka. Scripture says in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 12, The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the works of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations. You shall not borrow. When you have provision, you don't borrow. You give out. That will be our experience in 2022 in Jesus' name. Number nine, the presence of God brings transformation. Transformation. I was looking at the word transformation, and there are so many words that were used. There are so many words that were used, but the word, this words like adjustment, you know, amendment. But the real word that explains this, because if I amend my clothes, in a way I've transformed it. Okay, if I adjust, if I change the color of my car, I've transformed it, haven't I? But that's not what God is talking about. This transformation is talking about change, difference, another one. A different person. When you are transformed, just says, when you are a sinner and you become born again, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you are a new being. There is a change. It's not just an adjustment. So it's not just I paint my car. I change the color of my car. No, I have a brand new car. I have another car. I have a changed car. I have a trans because when you see when you see butterfly, when butterfly, when they mef- when they are transforming, they start from egg and they become a butterfly. And so there is there is a total you 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 can't you you can't imagine that this small egg has become that. That's what we're talking about. There is there is the presence of God transforms our lives. There are people who any small thing they are swearing, they have anger issue, they have this, they have that. God's presence in their life, the moment they give their life to Christ, transformation begins. There is a change in their form, a change in their nature, a change in their appearance, the way they speak, there is a change in it. People can say, wow, have, have, have you seen that guy? He, he, hardly, he doesn't swear anymore. He doesn't get angry anymore. It's, no, it's not that, oh, every once in a while you still get angry. No, 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 no. You are not transformed. You are not transformed. There is a little bit of adjustment. But that's not transformed. This transformation is, there is a change, complete change. A new person. There, there is a new you, a different you. Very quickly, Psalm 51 and verse 10. Psalm 51 and verse 10. You are, when you are transformed, you are refined. There is a change. There is a character change. We become not just a better person, but another person. You know, some people can some people, some people can improve. You are good, better, and your best. We thank God. But when it comes to God, um, 
God spends your life, you are transformed. You are a different person. People almost don't identify you. People almost cannot imagine that, wow, look at this person last year, the way they used to dress. Look at them now. Wow, there is a total change. It says, create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Next verse, verse 11. Do not cast me from the presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Restore. So when see when we become born again, you know what happened? We are restored to the person that God intended us to be. There is a restoration. There is a change. There is a transform. And I pray for you in 2022, the prayers of God will transform us in the name of Jesus. The same thing people say that gets you angry in 2021, they say it a million times. You don't even flinch. They wonder, wow. You see, this change that we're talking about, you don't tell people. People obs- people notice it. I don't tell you, oh, Pastor Fadeke, I'm a changed person now. If you cost me, I, will not, I, will not, I don't even kiss my anymore. No, no, no. They will see. Scripture says in Matthew 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine that people will see. I don't need to tell you, Bishop Isaac, I'm telling now, if you come and play me or FIFA or do this, huh? I don't need to. You just ask me, say, I'm not playing, man. Because I don't play anymore. So that's what we're talking about. Romans 12 and verse 2, very popular, says, Do not conform to this world, but be transformed. So, when you are a changed person, you don't conform anymore. You don't conform with the way you used to do things. You don't conform. You are a different person. You are a new person. You are another person. You are not the same person. People want to carry God's presence, and they still want to conform to the world. So they, there is now a conflict of identity. What do I do? What do I not do? How far can I go? I don't want to sin, but I want to play around sin. You will sin. You don't want to sin, but you are playing. You will sin. If you don't want fire to burn you, don't go near the fire. It's that simple. Don't go. You see, as this fire, if I go near this fire, if I stay there for two, three hours, it will burn me. The solution is I should not go. You see, the where Bishop Tosin is sitting is okay. He will still enjoy the fire. If he, 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 he can sit there for one hour, the fire will not burn it because it's, it's balanced. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen says, "Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. Ha. When you get a new phone." When you get a new car, when you buy a new house, when you buy a new shoe, you can't tell me I have a new shoe and you went to go and amend your old shoe. I tell you that's not new. You just went to the shoe cobbler, you fix it. That ain't new. So you are a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. Behold, that is transformation. That is that is God transforming us. Very quickly, Second Corinthians chapter three and verse eighteen. Second Corinthians three and verse eighteen. Ladies and gentlemen, the presence of God is what we need. God's presence is what we need. God's presence is what will make the difference. Nothing less, nothing more. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit we are being transformed we are being changed we are being changed we are being restored that word that translates restored there is the word that translates um, transformation change so it, God, when God says you are transformed He's not trying to patch patch you. You know, sometimes you can <laughs> you know when I was a student, when I was a when I was in secondary school, you buy school uniform. 
and after like I meant to work for a whole, a, a whole academic year. After like after, after the first time or something, there is there is there is a tear. My mom would not take it to the tailor; they would just patch it. <laughs> they just amend it. They just slap something on there and they will sew it. And 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 sometimes it's very embarrassing, depending on the area. But so my mom would say, "Well, that's that's the best I can do." And I'm like, "What?" I will manage it. But that's not new. Just because something is amended is not new. But when God says you are a new creature, you are transformed, there is a change. You are not just amending something. There's a change. And I pray for you and I. If there's any area of our life that needs changing today, let that change begin in the name of Jesus. If there's any area of our life that needs transforming, let that transform begin in the name of Jesus. Is it, is it interesting that the same person that was killing Christian in scripture, he was transformed completely. The same person who was Saul, after an encounter with the Spirit of God, he was on a road. To Damascus on the cross street. He was going to Damascus. He was Saul was going to make the king to sign a letter so that he can continue his wickedness to Christians to continue to crucify them. And it's interesting that there was a transformation. There was a he became a different person. That's why some people when they become born again, they'll give themselves a different name. They want a new name to their name. They'll change their name. Depending on what kind of name they are, because some people, in fact, they have they, they are, their last name as maybe Ogo in it or something. You think it's Jesus or Jesus or something or Olu or something. They are trying to make a point that I'm not the same person anymore. And and and, and we saw what Paul did in scriptures after his transformation, after his encounter, because the prayers of God transformed him. Lastly, number 10, favor. The presence of God attracts favor. Ladies and gentlemen, people favor you without even knowing what they are doing. We've been to places they say, well, we, we don't usually do this, but they do it for you. We don't usually do this, but they do it. That's, you, you wonder, what did I do? What kind of soap did I used to have this morning? It's, it's not soap. It's the same soup you have been using. It's not the water you drink. It's not. Some people say, hey, maybe I slept on the right side, right, side, right side of the bed. It's not bed. It's nothing. It's just God's favor. It's the, it's the presence of God. You go to a place where they cannot just receive, refuse you. Favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. It's something beyond. People are going extra mile for your case. They are going far and beyond. It's because you carry something. They probably don't know why they are doing what they are doing. Some people will say, I might get sacked for it, but I feel like I should help you. Ah, does it sound okay? I can probably get sacked for it, but I should probably help you. At least if, if, if that's not happened to you, you've seen it in Hollywood. Psalm 5 and verse 12. Psalm 5 and verse 12, very quickly. I said here, God's presence in your life make people favor you even when you don't deserve it. Favor, they said, it's not fair. Even when, Because if we have to deserve everything that we get, guess what? We will get nothing. If we have to deserve everything that we get, you will get nothing. You will work so hard, you will get nothing. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. So when you carry God's presence, the favor of God surrounds you like a shield. Psalm 84 and verse 11 says, For the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord bestowed favor and honor. He will bestow. When favor is bestowed unto you, everywhere you go, you will be honored. Everywhere you go, you will be honored. I don't think there's anyone here who doesn't want to be favored in 2022. I don't think there's anyone saying, you know what, I don't want honor. I'm okay. I want to. No. 
because favor open doors god's presence does so many to that's why i say god's presence is 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 so many there's so many benefits i could probably talk about 100 benefits so many benefits hebrews 4 and verse 6 let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need it is the presence of god on you with you in you that gives you the confidence to draw nearer to the throne of grace you see in the old testament the that the priest the high priest does not have god's presence so for him to go to the most holy place once a year he needs to be holy for 364 days you can imagine you can imagine being perfect every day for 364 days just because you want to enter god's presence for one day but you see god's presence now gives us boldness to come to god even with our sin we say god i'm sorry forgive me that is why when we pray we start with a prayer of forgiveness because that presence sometimes you know you've done wrong you don't want to pray but something is pushing you to pray just say god i'm sorry you start by worshiping god you are trying to bribe god it's his presence because he's trying to pass a message he's trying to communicate with you he's trying to talk to you second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says god is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficient in all things at all time god is able god is able to make all grace Another benefit of God's presence is authority. The presence of God gives you authority. You see, there is difference between power and authority. You see, when you see people in uniform, policemen in particular, they have authority, but they, have, they don't have power. Some policemen, you can probably <laughs> beat them up in a jiffy. <laughs> but their uniform means that they carry authority. You can't touch them even all these common uh, people that give tickets on the road sometimes they are so mean they are so stubborn they are so rigid but you can't touch them not because of anything but because of the authority they carry they carry the crest of the queen they, they're wearing uniform you just feel like man fam just come to my area isn't it? I'm so ladies and gentlemen you, men, you, you have authority you are there is an they, you you carry an authority you carry an authority that, that 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 people just obey people just listen to you i pray ladies and gentlemen may we enjoy the presence of god in 2022 in the name of jesus whatever we will do that will separate us from god's presence may we not do it in the name of jesus if there's one thing that can that can deprive us from enjoying god's presence is living in sin is one thing to sin what makes you a sinner is not because you sin is that you keep sinning you are living in sin you are a perpetual sinner god's presence will cut off from us because there is there is now there is a distraction between you and the flow and it is, it is my prayer for you and i that will, the presence of God will not depart from us in the name of Jesus. We saw people in scripture, the presence of God left them. King Saul, the presence of God left him. The presence of God left him. Let us rise upon our feet. I wanted to pray. I said, God, I, I, I really want to enjoy your presence. Give me the grace. Help me, O Lord God. You see, for God's presence to come upon you, you need the help of God to enjoy his presence. All this is I'm saying because life is difficult. Life, there are so many issues. There are so many challenges. And that is why we cannot do life by ourselves. We need God to help us. Sometimes getting angry is almost impossible. But in the midst of your anger, you hear God and you are calm. Because often when, when you tell somebody what happened, you are almost justified to do whatever you want to do to revenge. But God's presence says, just leave it to me. Just pray and say, God help me. God help me. 
God help me, God help me, God help me, God help me. I, 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 I really want to do whatever I will do that will separate me. Whatever I will do that will not make me enjoy your presence. Let me not do in the name. Whatever I will go, whatever I will say, whatever I will think. <laughs> because sometimes you are not doing, but you are thinking. Because people that do, they thought first before doing. Nobody wake up and say, I'm going to go and bomb this place. They've thought about it for years, for months, for weeks. Whatever I will think that will make me, that will deprive me, let me not think of it. Just pray. Just say, God help me. Just pray. Just pray this morning. Just pray. Say, God help me. Let's say, God, let your grace come upon me. Let your grace come upon me in the name of Jesus. That is, let your grace come upon me. Let your grace come upon me. Just pray, just give God. Let your grace, let your grace come upon me. In there, I want to enjoy. There's so many enjoyment in God's presence. There's so many enjoyment in God's presence. There's so many enjoyment in God's presence. Les jukata bragodo, rasa kete bragodoshka. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, help us. All, all, all the things you have been saying about your divine presence is, is wonderful, is great, is awesome. But we know we cannot do it by ourselves. By ourselves, we cannot, we, we just cannot do, we cannot sustain it. We need you. Lord, help us in the name of Jesus. You are God of mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. If there be anything in our life that is depriving your, the fullness of your presence, let those things be removed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.